As you know, I'm a critic of the status quo in Indian affairs, but I love to shine a light on success stories or people trying to be entrepreneurs, which brings us to our guest. We've had him on the show before. His name is Calvin Helene. He's the author of The Economic Dependency Trap, and the reason we're having him on the show today is he's the president of something new called Eagle Spirit Energy Holdings. Calvin Helene joins us from Vancouver, and welcome back to the show. It's great to be here, Ezra. Now, Calvin, I read this amazing story in the Globe and Mail that you have teamed up with some very serious business people. Dave Tuckero, who's uh, another Aboriginal in, in northern Alberta, he's, he's made tens of millions of dollars off the oil sands, and some non-Aboriginal business people. And your idea is simple. Build a pipeline to the West Coast, but have it Indian-owned. Do I summarize your proposal correctly? Um, actually, our, our proposal is, is more to build an energy corridor from the uh, Alberta border to uh, the BC coast. And that corridor could um, basically contain anything um, from, uh, we've, we've been approached already about running uh, um, uh, you know, power lines and that kind of thing, including uh, natural gas pipelines and that sort of thing. And the idea is that uh, if you have a real partnership model and, and Aboriginal people are actually engaged in a situation where um, there's a, you can create a real balance between environmental concerns and, and uh, business concerns um, to, and to have real consultation and accommodation of, Ab of uh, First Nations interests. Now, I want to ask how your proposal is different from the two pipeline proposals to the West Coast right now, the Northern Gateway, which would break new ground across the northern part of the province, and the doubling of the Trans Mountain Pipeline, which is already in place, to Vancouver. How are you going to be successful where those two pipelines aren't? Aren't there a, a dozens of Indian bands who have said, no way we want oil sands oil going through our territory? How will you overcome the objections that these two existing proposals haven't? Well, at, at present, what we're proposing is a uh, First Nations energy corridor and anything can go through there. We aren't going to do anything that uh, isn't um, approved by the First Nations uh, people in the area. Um, but, you know, you just need to look at the front of the uh, Vancouver Sun today or, or uh, your 24-hour uh, magazine and uh, the, the front's uh, story is that uh, the Energy co uh, Commissioner of Canada says the environmental protections on the BC coast aren't sufficient. Um, you know, people are opposed to, uh, to uh, what's being proposed because we don't have adequate uh, finan or environmental protections for the coastal waters or, or the uh, lands to a world standard and uh, those sorts of things need to be introduced. Now, let me ask you this. Have you, I mean, I met you in Alberta, and then Dave Tuckero, who's one of your business partners, he's an Alberta boy. I, Albertans always want to build pipelines. I want to ask, have you had reaction from any of the uh, First Nations chiefs who have opposed uh, Northern Gateway, or uh, I don't think they've opposed uh, Trans Mountain, but the ones who opposed the Ambridge Pipeline, have you had conversations with them? If you and Dave Tuckero and other Indians were in charge, would they say yes to you where they've said no to Enbridge? Well, we've been in, in some discussions, but we still have yet to consult with uh, most of the groups. And w what we're introducing is a real partnership model. And that is in all of these kinds of major projects that uh, are being proposed, that the First Nations be involved in the design, the build, the operation, ownership, and monitoring of, of such projects. If, if they're concerned about uh, the environmental impacts, they should have a large hand in creating the environmental regime that, that uh, goes forward from here. Now, I, I'm familiar with the Enbridge proposal. They've offered 10% equity in the pipeline to the Indian bands. They've offered set-asides for Aboriginal employment on a permanent basis. And from what I've seen, they basically said yes to every possible environmental technology uh, proposed. Uh, is there anything in particular that you would do more than what Enbridge has offered? I mean, I look at their $6 billion plan, and an enormous amount goes to Aboriginal affairs and environment. How would you be different other than you would have a native face 
on a pipeline for the first time. Is that really the difference? Is that this would be the first Indian pipeline? And no. What's the difference? No. The difference is, is that there, the, the environmental rules and regulations that currently exist for this kind of, of project are wholly inadequate. Uh, when you have the Environment Commissioner of Canada saying that, um, they're, they're saying what uh, everybody in BC is thinking about Enbridge's proposal. Um, there are two jurisdictions in the world that have much higher uh, levels of environmental protection and, uh, and uh, those are Alaska and uh, Norway. And of the, um, of the uh, regime that's uh, put in place in Alaska, it was the it's the Native Americans that have largely put that in place and are running all of the businesses related to, uh, to um, all of the environmental protections around it. It's, it's one of the most successful records in the world. Calvin, we're out of time today, but I am fascinated by your proposal. Please keep in touch with us as it goes uh, along. I'd like to, to hear how your uh, offer is met by Indian chiefs in B.C. and by the industry. Thanks for being here today. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.